to my channel. Today I'm hoping to talk to you about Captain William Kidd, one of the most famous pirates in pirate history and probably all of maritime history as well because he kind of became an example for pirates everywhere to beware but also kind of set the tone for the stereotypes of piracy which were later adopted by Robert Louis Stevenson in Treasure Island and that's why we have so many unusual things being said about pirates. Like I've mentioned before, pirates never buried treasure. That's not something they did. Also, treasure weren't, wasn't exactly, you know, money and coins and jewels. It was mostly spices, calico, and other kinds of things that would be traded because pirates would intercept the Atlantic trade between the Caribbean, England, Madagascar, and India, of course. Which is why when Henry Avery did what he did, which we discussed in a previous video and I'll put it up here, he really upset the East India Trading Company and he created a wedge between England and the Mughals and it was very important for them to restore this kind of faith. So now, for a while, the English were on the prowl to catch anybody who might show pirate behavior and make sure to make an example of that person that might circulate or be marketed in some way. Now, William Kidd was born in Scotland and he was actually just a regular sailor. He was hired by the English and he worked very hard. He made it to the Caribbean. He actually led a mutiny himself at the time and got himself made captain. He was really good friends with the guy who was the first Earl of Belmont. Belmont financed Kidd to travel more and hunt down pirates. So in a weird way, William Kidd was a pirate hunter and that was his job. And as he went to look for Thomas II and his crew, he ended up in sort of India and in that region. And as he was going up the coast of Madagascar towards the Indian Ocean, he got hit with a lot of bad luck. So everyone on his ship got cholera, which decimated his crew and a third of them died. And now the people who were left on his crew were starting to get a little bit angry and frustrated because every ship they kind of tried to take, they had failed, they were weakened, their immune system was messed up, and they're just angry. Like nothing was going well. They weren't making money. They felt like they were wasting their time. And over time, if the ship docked somewhere, more people would leave. And there were a lot of threats of another mutiny, this time against William Kidd. There were two big scenarios or events that happened leading up to the capture of William Kidd. So the first one was that they saw a Dutch ship and Kidd knew not to attack the, the Dutch ship, but his gunner, someone by the last name Moore, had an argument with him suggesting that they should attack this Dutch ship. Going back and forth, they got into a more heated argument which turned into a physical fight and Kidd hit Moore with an iron bucket over his head which injured him severely because Moore died the very next day. Now, we will discuss the pirate code in the future because there's a lot to unpack, but a big no-no is killing another crew member on your own ship. You can have a duel if it comes to it for something else, but for the most part, you shouldn't just kill somebody, especially when you're captain, because that's like a very easy way to have your crew kind of start thinking about mutiny again. Second thing that happened, which was the big one, was that they saw a ship. This ship was called the Quida Merchant. It was an Armenian ship with some Armenian people and it was sort of owned or financed by some French person, but the captain of the ship was an Englishman. And Kidd and his crew did not know that. So they attacked this ship, loot it, and steal a lot of it, including the ship itself. Because the ship that they already had was kind of growing weak, they had a lot of holes, it was barely hanging together by a thread. So they needed to steal it. At first, he kind of changed his mind as a captain when he found out that the other captain was an Englishman. But his crew was too angry by that point. They were devastated, they were angry, they were mutinous. So 
he had no choice. In a weird way, his own crew turned him pirate, even though he felt like he was pressured into making this choice. So by the time they get back to Madagascar, everyone in the East India Trading Company finds out that William Kidd did this, they start a new manhunt, similar to the one for Henry Avery. But William Kidd had no idea that this was happening because for him it was an unfortunate event that all of this happened. He had no clue that the English captain was going to cause so much chaos, especially since the ship was under the protection of the French version of the East India Trading Company. The laws weren't as harsh, especially for him, who was a privateer financed by Belmont. He had quote-unquote letters of mark and there was no reason why what he did was so illegal given what other people were doing out at sea. The moment he realizes he's kind of a wanted criminal, he goes to the Caribbean and then to New York and whatever he looted he buries on this tiny island called Gardner's Island off the coast of Long Island, New York in a place called Cherry Orchard something um, around that little island and that's don't worry people have dug that up since a lot but he was looking for refuge and safety with his friend Belmont and Belmont was the governor of New York right he was a good friend of his and he was scared at that point that his friendship to William Kidd might make him look like a person who favors pirates or is friends with pirates so his friend turned him in and put him in prison. He stayed in prison for about a year or so and then was sent to England for his trial and his hanging. Now in this time he was also married to a woman named Sarah who was three times widowed. While he was captured people also interrogated her and imprisoned her for a while because they wanted to find out if she knew where he buried the treasure. When William Kidd makes it back to England his trial is super famous. Everyone comes to attend it. He clearly states, I have letters of mark, I have some treasure, which I am willing to pay for this trial to bring proof of my innocence. Now, this is the first time ever in history that treasure or any kind of valuable item was buried for safekeeping in the pirate realm. This wasn't a thing. But because this trial was so famous, it kind of became a fable or a legend of some sort and it got later adapted into Treasure Island as I've discussed before. A few things happen at this trial. Some of his own crew members speak against him. Second, it is famously known that his best friend Bellamon turned him in, which is another big betrayal. While he hangs the first time, the rope breaks, which is high suspense for a trial. And he says a lot of last words that are pretty like out there and then he hangs again and now because they want to make a big example of him his body is then covered in tar, is gibbeted and he's held out at the harbor as an example for other pirates or people who might consider flipping over from privateer to pirate to learn a lesson and not do that because the English are serious and again this was all kind of a bit more sensationalized than usual just because at the time there were big attempts trying to restore the relationship between the East India Trading Company and the Indian Ocean and everyone on the eastern side. The trial was also published so everyone could read it. This was huge. It went out of print so fast and then second editions were made and more editions came out. People loved to read the trial of William Kidd. Um, I was reading this book for Jane Austen July which is called Jane Austen's England and one of the first things that got my attention was that William Kidd is on the cover. While it doesn't dedicate an entire chapter to him, it says Nearly all urban centers had their own gallows, usually erected for a particular execution and dismantled afterwards, and occasionally criminals were hanged at the scene of their crime. Following execution, the body might be hung in chains in a public place as a warning to others. This involved the corpse being bound in iron chains and fitted into a cage of iron bands to hold it together while it rotted. But what I want to sort of semi-review here are these two books, Why We Love Pirates by Rebecca Simon, PhD, and The Pirate Hunter by Richard Zacks. Now, the differences between these two books, while they both focus entirely 
on Captain William Kidd is that this book is a lot more introductory. It begins by laying the groundwork, talking about how pirates came to be. This is an excellent, excellent introduction to pirates. I've mentioned this a few times before. It drops you into the world of William Kidd very gradually, but it also has transcripts, and I loved that. Um, you get to read parts of the conversations from journals between William Kidd and Moore, his gunner that he killed. You get to uh, read his most of his trial, which is really cool. And you get to see kind of the, the reaction worldwide. And you get to be introduced to a lot of piratey things. And I just love this book. But I felt like it was a little bit more gentle, I want to call it. Her attempt was to compare it to sailors. And here I do agree 100%. When you compare pirates to just normal sailors or privateers, it was a lot better for a lifestyle to be a pirate because sailors had horrible conditions. They were absolutely trapped. They couldn't rise up against their captain very easily. Um, they were paid very little. They had horrible conditions. And we will talk about sailors soon because I have another review coming up. There was a democratic way that pirates dealt with issues on their boat. They would always take a vote. Every man counts. Every single man. The captain many times wouldn't get any special treatment, uh, which is so unique in piracy. And the last thing was that when they looted something, no matter what that was, they would share the gains equally among the crew and this was so unique they also had something resembling health insurance which is another big deal yes you wanted to be a pirate versus a sailor but the cost of getting caught was also rising and getting even tougher post william kidd so I definitely recommend this book if you're just learning about pirates you're new to the topic now the second book is entirely about william kidd and it goes into the details of you know, even the backstory of Belmont, like every person, every character involved in William Kidd's life um, is explored at length. His entire biography here is like laid bare. There is no stone left unturned. At the same time, when he does pan out a little bit and tries to look at piracy as a whole, I found that Zax does not really hold back from portraying the most gruesome, the bloodiest, um, gore of pirate realities and in my opinion I think the truth is somewhere between the two um, I felt like this one focused way too much on the negative and this one a little bit too much on the positive and the truth is found somewhere in the middle because these things made these things worth it right like no one did all of the the bad things or experienced all the negative like consequences without reason and a lot of them were also family men and a lot of the things that they were doing were also to benefit their families back home and a lot of people were forced into piracy in many ways and I think for me what was highlighted by both books is that the line of morality was so so thin and blurry because you could do the exact same thing but if you had one particular signature, it was totally fine and moral and you're a hero. But if you didn't, you're the worst criminal ever and you should be hung and your body covered in tar. This is why I find it a bit fascinating when I consider pirates in the context of just overall maritime history or um, naval history, just worldwide. Because the difference is just too small. Now the last thing I'll mention is in this book there are many years and facts and a lot more political discourse of the time that contributed to William Kidd's demise. There were a lot of people plotting against him, a lot of people didn't like his attitude even when he was just a sailor. People kind of bribing other people to speak up against him. Um, there's a lot of political kind of drama. So what I summarized for you earlier were just kind of the events leading up to it. And during his trial, that murder of his first gunner was also brought up as um, a case against him. But this would never come up unless they really wanted to make a point and to make sure his trial ends in, in hanging. I think they both contribute something valuable to the context of 
Captain Kidd and to the beginnings of the golden age of piracy because after Kidd the golden age starts so now things will get a lot more interesting and we'll get to Blackbeard and all the other cool pirates thank you all very much for watching if you stuck with me so far and I will see you in my next video bye